What's up, my ninjas? I'm Strident, and I am back with a G.I. Joe review, strangely enough. I picked these guys up several months ago at Five Below. I got them and some uh, other figures. I spent like 30, maybe 25 bucks, so I got a, a bunch of figures, like six figures. Um, these are the G.I. Joe, I'm sorry, Retaliation uh, Cobra Combat Ninja, or as they were known in the fucking movie, the Cobra Special Forces. And I really dig these uh, figures because I'd say they're probably the one of the best things to come out of the of the line next to the almighty Joe Trooper. Um, there's a lot of things they do they've done right with these figures, and there's a good reason for it, and I'm going to get into that here in a second. But uh, as you can see, I have someone else who's jumping into my uh, <laughs> review because I have something else I want to add to this you know, series of reviews so that you guys know what's going on. Um, what I have pictured here is uh, one of my favorite figures. And lately I've been looking back at my old stuff and then it dawned on me. There's something I should probably start doing a little bit more often. I just real quickly wanted to interrupt my uh, current review to give you guys a little... Uh, uh, or add to my current review, I'm sorry, that I'm going to be doing some uh, reviews of Transformers because I'm not a huge Transformers fan the way that most people on YouTube are. I'm very picky about which ones I like and uh, I don't have the income to just willy-nilly buy any Transformer that's released, you know, and a lot of them are really expensive and kind of do the same things that others do. So I have a very small, you know, in comparison to my other action figure um, collections, I have a very small and particular, you know, Transformers collection, and I would like to share it with you guys. So I'm going to, after probably somewhere in between my Cops and my He-Man and my the, the last bit of G.I. Joe reviews I have left, uh, I'm going to do some Transformers reviews. I mean, I started with Jazz because it was a birthday present, but this here is my favorite Optimus Prime ever. You know, I would love the Toy World Orion because I think if I got that, it would be my next favorite Optimus ever, but I can't afford it right now. I missed out on it when it first came out. So, uh, I'm still happy that I have this because I think this is the one I compare everything to and it's the one I've played with so much and you know you can still see he's in great condition so this will be one of my next reviews so anyway I just want to throw that in there or out there I'm sorry put it in this review let you guys know that it's coming and uh, you can look forward to it if you want to you know whatever <laughs> you know how that goes so anyway back to the review we now return to our regularly scheduled review already in progress just kidding. Anyway, um, I'm doing this kind of the old school way because it's a Joe review and because there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to go back over. Like I'm not going over um, articulation because there's nothing special here and everything kind of works. Uh, there's the same issues that you've had before with the grip. These guys, essentially because they are uh, retooled or repainted versions of a prior figure, they have the same issues that that prior figure had or those prior figures had. Um, but I'm not going to go over everything the same way I usually do simply because, you know, it's more of the same. You know, it's Hasbro, it's G.I. Joe. You know that they don't really go too far off the beaten path when it comes to new quote unquote Joes. It's usually something you already got with, you know, different paint or something added to the mix. So uh, with that said... He, it, these are no different, but the paint is really cool. I like the fact that they gave you options as far as how you can play or display these characters. I like the fact that they come with a shitload of weaponry, which is really different, you know? Uh, I was expecting, uh, I wasn't expecting so much with the figure, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I like the uh, choice of some of the weapons. I do have problems with the weapons that they did indeed put in this uh, set because some of them don't necessarily, uh, they don't work for me in the same way that the, um, the Joe Trooper and you know some of the other figures did. Um, you do get options. I love the flags because you can use those in dioramas if you want to. Um, 
And, you know, just like I said, just overall, it's a solid release. They didn't really go too far off the beaten path, like I said. But what they did change and what they did differently and what they tweaked, it kind of works. It's not so bad. It's, 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 you know, a lot of things that they just look good. You know what I mean? That's the best way to put it. I love the new helmets. They're, they're pretty screen accurate. And I guess that's one of the things that I, I need to drive home. You know, in the whole, what, four, I think it was four or five waves or three waves. Technically, it was five waves, but one wave was done twice and they put different figures in there. Um, this is the most, one of the most movie accurate figures. And it should have been like this all across the board, but I've already done that rant. Now, on to the sculpt of this figure and why he has the same problems as other figures. It's because he's essentially... A steel brigade with a different head you know or a shock trooper with a different head uh they've got the same web gear same limbs just different paint so you know they all these figures have issues holding weapons i mean look closely at their web gear and everything you can see it even where the belts are it's just at the cobra special forces figure which is mind you more expensive than both of those figures were at when they came out in retail um they all they they painted it less and charged you more. Whereas the other two, they were nine ninety nine or eight ninety nine or seven ninety nine when they first. I think they were seven ninety nine when they first dropped, and they went up to about ten bucks. But look at that! All the absent of absence of paint that's going on on that 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 web gear. And I get it; it's camo, so it kind of works with the design. And that's why I'm not complaining. But I'm just saying, you look at that, and then you go back and look a couple years back. There was paint. You see flat and uh, shiny, uh, what is it, gloss finish paint, as well as the Cobra symbol painted up there in the top. Um, you see the little bit of gray going over top the pouches on the bottom portion. Look at the Steel Brigade version. There's even more paint on that one. You've got about two or three shades of paint on there. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's bittersweet. You, you're getting some kind of quality but at the same time, you're seeing how they kind of dipped away from the quality that they once were giving us. You know, look at the arms. It's the exact same figure. I mean, I don't know how else to, to put this into words so that, you know, people understand. I mean, the knees, everything is exactly the same as the Steel Brigade and the Cobra Shock Trooper. The only difference here is the, uh, the awesome head sculpt. I like the head sculpt. It's... Um, it's a pretty cool, different head sculpt. It works. I don't have issues with it. It looks the part. Uh, it's a different balaclava, and we need that because, I mean, they've been using the same balaclava over and over and over. This one looks more like a ninja. So, you know, hey, <laughs> it looks more like a ninja. Now, the gear. I, I like the gear, but there's some issues. And I know one of these pieces I just put here because I utilized it, and I want to tell you guys about that. But... uh. The gear I have issues with. The flag is awesome because you need Cobra to represent, you know? And I think Cobra's a little bit more bombastic than G.I. Joe when it comes to that. I mean, they're freaking battle cry and everything tells the tale. They're screaming, letting you know they are Cobra, they're the bad guys. Um, but I have issues with stuff like the sword. This exact sword. Why did they choose this sword for the Cobra Special Forces? They had generic katanas or ninjatos uh, in the movie. Why do they have that sword what do i mean by that sword that sword you guys have seen before we've all seen before it comes from the uh, rise of cobra snake eyes now if this movie is taking place after that film and it's taking some of the elements from that previous film you can't just ignore that snake eyes had a very distinct blade you know what i mean distinct grip distinct everything so it's like why is it that they just were lazy and said, hey, we're just going to repackage it? I mean, down to the tetragram and everything. It's like, why, why, are we, why are we going through this? You know what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't make any damn sense. Um, and, you know, I'm not nitpicking because, you know, there's a lot of ninjas and a lot of ninja type characters. But, I mean, look at that. Down to the, the tetragram that is, you know, carved into the blade, it's exactly snake eyes is sword once again exactly snake eyes is sword with kind of a dull paint job it's almost like 
what it really looks like because the sword was kind of stuck in the sheet for a long time because I didn't bother taking all of them out. It's like they use thinner paint, so the black is showing through. Now with all these different blades, and there's more, I just grabbed a couple because I have a box full of like ninja gear, extra ninja gear that I'm not using on my figures. There's more swords they could have used in that in place of the one they did use. Anyway, the next thing is this sheet. This sheet comes with the uh, Retaliation Crimson Guard, which is an awesome figure. I think in the uh, in, in in Retaliation they call them CGs, not C letter C and G, but Siege like CGs. But anyway, you can change the rank and display the ranks of your various soldiers, you know, with that sticker, which I think is pretty cool, that sticker sheet. And you have a lot of stickers, so if you have a lot of soldiers and you have a place to put it, it adheres pretty well and it's awesome. Um let's talk a little bit about the weaponry that they packed with these guys. Now, I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to weapons because I feel like, kind of like what they said in a training day, <laughs> I know this is kind of cliche, but you know when you design characters and such, the weapons that you choose to give them or the accessories that you choose to give them help define their character. So if I want, if I have like an American soldier who's supposed to be like, you know like Duke, he's like you're all American, you know good old boy type i mean like and i mean good old boy in the in a good sense i don't mean it like he's a racist country bumpkin type but no he's like standard government issue there's certain weapons that you're going to give him you know a scar that's common you know um uh like an m16 or 18 or whatever yeah that makes sense you know what i mean uh maybe even a g36 yeah that makes sense but you would not give him an ak but they packaged him with an ak when he came out. And I showed you that in my uh, review. Now, with the Cobra figures, a lot of these weapons came with other characters. And typically, I think of the weapon as part of that particular release. So the, uh, the FN 2000, that's the gun that they used in, in uh, Rise of Cobra. That's what the Joes used in Rise of Cobra. And a lot of the Rise of Cobra figures came with them the good guys. Why is that packaged with the Cobra Special Forces? You know what I mean? The Scar. Typically, the Scar came with a lot of the good guys. Why is that being packaged with the bad guys? You know what I mean? Um, the uh, uh, HK, what is that? An HK uh, G36. 36. It's a G36. Why is that packaged with, uh, you know, the Cobra when, I mean, I know that it's come with other Cobras, but typically, I've had it with a lot of my Joes, you know? So there's certain guns that I uh, I associate with, you know, the heroes or the good guys versus the bad guys. A lot of times, you know, the Russian weapons, the, the typical uh, terrorist, excuse me, the tip typical terrorist weapons, when I say terrorist, like they're the weapons you usually see insurgents using or you see uh, uh, militias and stuff using. Or sometimes, you know, when you watch movies, you see bad guys using, like you see every variation of the freaking AK, typically they give it to bad guys. I mean, I'm just pointing out what I see. So I just thought some of these choices were strange. Um, it is a cool selection of guns because it's giving you a ton of weapons. So, you know, props to them for giving us a ton of weapons. Um, it's None of it is, is, is really bad because anybody could use anyone but specifically the um, FN2000 uh, or FS2000, I was like, wow, really? That's really specific. I see that as the gun that the Joes used in Rise of Cobra. So my Shadowhammer folks, that's their standard machine gun. But um, anyway, you got a, a wide range of weapons here. And then you also have an extra head, which kind of is reminiscent of uh, Gray Fox and Metal Gear. So I have like the leader of my little squad. He has that cool cybernetic helmet, you know. He might not even be human, who knows. Uh, and the other battle helmet is pretty cool too because like I said, it's, it's you know, screen accurate. A fun fact is the, uh, the uh, what are they called? Marauders, Gunrunners figures uh, come with that helmet too. As, as well as several other helmets. But anyway, all in all, this figure, it's a fun little figure. It does a lot of things right. 
I can't complain too much about, you know, what came in this package. Um, for the most part, he holds his weapons. Like I said, he has the same issues that the, uh, uh, you know, the other two figures I showed you have when it comes to holding weapons. But, you know, you can finagle with them and find a gun that fits in his hands properly. Um, he does have the extra, uh, you know, hinges on his hands. One for the gun and one to cup the gun, you know, one to properly aim and one to cup, but uh, or support. I'm sorry, cupping is that's something else. But anyway, it's almost good enough to stand up to the king dingling of retaliation, which is the Joe Trooper. So, I mean, if if you're looking for this sort of thing, I think you, you can't go wrong. He goes for like 16, 17 bucks on uh, eBay and uh, I'm sorry, on uh, Amazon. So anyway, I'm strident. This has been my review of the G.I. Joe Retaliation Cobra Combat Ninja, a.k.a. Cobra Special Forces. It's a really good, basic kind of figure. It does what it's supposed to do. It looks the part. And if you can find them for cheap enough, they would be really good army builders because, of course, they are the basic soldiers for the rise of, Co I mean, I'm sorry, Retaliation Cobra Forces. So anyway, I'm Strident. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it, and I will catch you on my next video. Peace outside, everyone.